Hey, Richard Bryce here. Welcome to part two of my learning to hit a two-handed backhand series. I've been playing with a one-handed backhand my entire life. Now I'm naturally a right-hander, so I used to have a one-handed backhand on my right hand. Unfortunately, for the last few years, I've been relearning to play left-handed. I thought I was good at mountain biking, and I entered a race and it turns out I wasn't, so I mangled my collarbone and now I can't play right-handed anymore. But the left-handed journey, I've got to a pretty decent point using my one hand, but after seeing that even as an old man, I can improve stuff, it makes me want to try and develop that two-hander because it's just so much better than the one-hander. All the statistics point to it. So in theory, if I can get good with that, it should be better than my one-hander. So that's what I'm trying. So. I'm obviously not a beginner, but I do apply foundational concepts. So what I really want to show you throughout this series is how you apply the foundational concepts. Video one was about changing grip. Video two, I'll show you what that's about now. This time around, I'm still focusing on the grip change because in order to learn a new skill, it takes a lot of different repetitions, but I'm also incorporating other aspects of my preparation. So I'm kind of focusing on the preparation all as one chunk because the preparation is the first and most important part in every shot. If you don't prepare and get set up in the right position for your shot, you're not gonna be able to develop good technique. It's gonna cause bad habits. So many of the bad habits that people can't deal with on all their strokes happen because they're not set up in the right position for their shots. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on. The grip change, trying to get lots of repetitions because I've got to go from the conscious phase of learning into the associative phase of learning into the autonomous phase of learning. And as I do that, I'm doing the preparation, but I also want to challenge the type of ball that I have to deal with. So initially, I'm going to start out with a single feed. So this is kind of the easiest feed into a comfortable position, I know where it is, step in, I try and get the spacing. As I do that, I'm trying to get the grip change nice and smooth as well. Once I've done that on a particular feed, I then work on a slightly more difficult feed. So for me, um, I'm good from a neutral or a closed stance because I've done that as a one-hander my whole life, but I haven't hit too many open stance two-handed backhands. So I work on the open stance so that I can get used to the grip change and the preparation on the open stance. And my focus is still the same, changing the grip and trying to set up the right distance for the ball, but now it's a different type of ball. It's an open stance, but again, it's a single feed so I knew where it was going each time. Now I could do this for a variety of different types of two-hander but the next progression that I'm then going to work on is going to be a, an alternating feed. So now I feed one forehand and one backhand and the idea is I'm still focusing on the grip change on the backhand but I'm just feeding a forehand to distract myself so then I have to you know I'm in that forehand grip I have, then have to remember and turn and change. So now alternating so this is the next progression of difficulty. After that it's gonna become more variable. So I've set my ball machine to random. Now, I don't know where it's going. It could be more towards the forehand side. It could be more towards the backhand side. But when it comes to the backhand side, I'm focusing on the grip change and I'm focusing on the preparation, trying to set up the right distance for the ball. So obviously I'm gonna try and hit a good forehand, but technically it doesn't matter if it flies over the back fence because the backhand, the grip change, that's the skill that all my attention is focusing on. So this would be kind of the next progression in difficulty and then I could vary it so that now the ball is going short or it's going deep or it's going to the left or it's going to the right so there's a lot more different things to think about I'm challenging my ability to get a smooth grip change and to set up the right distance from the ball but I'm challenging at increasing levels of difficulty and obviously a progression past this is going to be rallying with a person and the end stage is going to be playing points but before I start trying to play points with my two-handed backhand I'm going to have to get thousands and thousands of repetitions of this first so this is the format that I use okay so hopefully what I've just explained there makes sense if you have any questions about it or how you should structure your practice leave me a comment down below and because I want to help you become a better player I want to let you know about a free live workshop that I've got coming up soon that's gonna show you a couple of different things. It's gonna talk about how to analyze your technique in more detail so you can figure out the underlying problem with your technique. And it's also gonna teach you how you can use brain-based training to improve your eye-to-hand and eye-to-foot coordination. So how you can become more skillful because really that's the key to playing high-level tennis. So I'll, I'll leave a link to that down in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you next time.